The morning started out great. It was a nice, crisp autumn day, with a breeze and the sun shining through the trees above us. The ground was covered in dry leaves that crunched underfoot as our little group of longtime friends made our way along the trail into the state forest. In college, we used to hike all the time. Every other weekend, we'd make a trip out to some mountain or another and camp for the night. Some of that had fallen by the wayside in recent years, what with the responsibilities of adulthood and all. But it was Ethan who first texted the group chat, suggesting we all get together for a reunion hike and a campout. After another month or so of coordinating everyone's schedules, we finally settled on a weekend. That wonderful Saturday morning arrived. We all met in that dusty parking lot as the sun rose over the hills to the east, hugging and laughing with one another over old times. Jake and Liam looked like they always had, unkempt and strong, dressed in their plaid shirts and hiking boots. Even my old roommate Sophia had cut her long, dark hair into a pixie style that did wonders for her animated face. She introduced her us to her new boyfriend Amir, who shook our hands with a grip that said he'd been in a few fistfights. We'd done the standard hiker routine of sorting our gear and applying some sunscreen before setting out, and by the time the haze of the morning burned off, we were a few miles down the trail. For the first little while, we chatted and caught up on old times, laughing at the insane shit we used to do in college and the ridiculousness of our early years in the real world. It was great being with these guys again. The sun rose higher in the sky and the terrain grew more difficult, and our pace slowed. I heard a few grumbles here and there as we made our way up the rocky rises. It seemed that Amir was more of a leisurely walker than a serious hiker, and he frequently paused to take in the view or snap some pictures. Amir had fallen well behind the rest of us by late morning. How much further is it? He asked again, taking another water break. It's just around the corner, I promise, said Jake. He always had this eager energy about him when we did this shit. I was starting to think that maybe we should have found an easier path to ease back into hiking season. Of course, if we'd been thinking about this a few months ago, I might have been able to talk myself into heading back down. Still, I took a long breath and kept urging my protesting legs to keep moving up the slope. We were walking for a bit when Jake threw his hand up and said, Hold up, folks. I gotta take a piss. He'd already left the trail and headed into the dense forest a bit to find a spot to relieve himself. The rest of us were still standing around on the dirt path, sipping at water bottles and readjusting backpacks. A minute later, Jake shouted back to us, Hey, check this out! We exchanged a confused glance and then both leapt into the bushes towards him. Pushing my way through the low branches, I joined Jake in the small clearing, where he crouched over an object lying on the ground. It took me a moment to realize it was an old digital camera encrusted with mud and leaves. Whoa, where did you find this? Amir asked, turning the object over in his hands and eyeing it closely. Hell, I don't know. Shit was just laying here in the mud when I arrived. You can see it's pretty beat to shit, so it's been here a while, Jake said. The blue camera body was scratched and weather-worn, and the brand name was difficult to make out. Some bits of grass and dried leaves still clung to the body, and the lens was coated in a layer of crud that made it nearly opaque. I could tell this camera had been sitting out here in the wild for a while. The battery is dead, but maybe the memory card is still good, said Amir as he opened the door. Jackpot, there is one here. How long have you had this, and where did it come from? asked Sophia. At the very bottom, I spotted a small faded carving that read, David Ellison shit. Maybe it's some hiker, like David Ellison, who got turned around and lost the trail, I offered. Jake pulled out his portable power bank and got some power to the old camera. The lens assembly groaned and whined as it extended painfully slow. All right, Mark, let's see what sort of hidden shit you hid for me, Jake said to himself. I had that strange feeling like we were invading something we shouldn't be, but I was curious. We all crowded around as Jake began to advance through the pictures. Jake powered on the camera and we all gathered around as he started flipping through the pictures that were saved on the memory card. Most of them looked fairly mundane at first, 
exactly the sort of thing you'd expect from any amateur nature photographer. Some sunlight streaming through the trees, a close-up shot of some flowering vine on a toppled tree, a big deer standing in a grassy clearing and staring right at the camera. Guy must be one hell of a photographer, this Mark guy, Amir said as we scrolled through them. But as we continued to scroll through the images, they began to change. The happy, well-posed images were replaced with blurry, disorganized shots of other things. I saw what looked like a very disheveled campsite, covered in garbage and with the ashes from the fire pit strewn about. Another was just a close shot of a hiking boot, the laces torn and muddy. Yet another was what appeared to be a jumble of animal bones half buried beneath some leaves. Okay, this is starting to get a little weird, said Sophia, crossing her arms and hugging herself as if she were getting chilly. The next image was a dark, low-resolution picture of some very thick woods at night, likely taken with some sort of low-light setting on the camera, but they were dark and foreboding nonetheless. I could almost thought the way the branches twisted and gnarled that they looked more like something out of a bad dream than anything real. In the shadows of the forest some way behind the foreground, a dark, amorphous shape lay nearly hidden at the edge of the frame. I struggled to determine if it were a boulder, overturned root ball, or something else entirely. I don't like it, folks. It's starting to creep me the hell out. Jake didn't need to keep looking at the pictures, but he did anyway. The next one was another low shot of the ground, more jacked up dirt and leaves, more of the same hand and knee impressions. They were too large and too far apart to be from anything but a... Sophia shuddered when she spotted it and even unflappable Liam lost his cool a bit. Jake's brow furrowed as he passed the tablet to the next image, this one a close-up of the base of one of the massive pine trees along the path. The bark was torn away as jagged grooves, exposing fresh sap-stained wood beneath. Four nearly identical gashes marred the otherwise smooth surface, too uniform to be anything natural. The camera was almost out of memory, Jake was maintaining his position, and we were all crowded around him, peeking over his shoulder. The next photo was the most horrifying of the set. To my panicked eyes, it looked nearly black, as if someone had left the lens cap on, but I could just barely make out the shape of... something. It was humanoid, roughly man-shaped, and easily twice the height of Jake. Even in the washed-out darkness of the photo, I could see the vague shape of a head, the eyes reflecting the camera's flash eerily pale. What the hell is that? Amir asked, his voice little more than a whisper. We all just stood there, frozen in place, holding our breath and looking at the menacing form. Jake slowly scrolled to the last picture on the set with unsteady hands, and we tensed, unsure of what horrific image might be presented. Again, the monitor was filled with the black void, but the reflective spots of the previous frame were much larger, indicating that the, whatever it was, was now very near the camera. We could hardly make out the blurriness of its form and could tell that it was huge, taller than eight feet and monstrously broad at the shoulders. Jake nearly dropped the camera, hands shaking so badly. I've seen all I need to see. He yanked the memory card and pocketed it, powering down the camera. We need to get the hell out of here, I said. Jake and Liam nodded their heads dazedly, agreeing. Amir remained frozen, staring at the blank camera feed. What? What was that? What happened with Mark? Sophia pulled on his arm. I don't know and I don't want to wait to find out. Come on. We turned and headed back to the trail, eager to put as much distance between us and whatever the hell that creepy thing from the photographs was supposed to be. The bright, open fall day seemed somehow dark and ominous now. The trail led us deeper into the forest, and the trees grew thicker and more oppressive, blotting out the light. Gone were the pleasant vistas and open grasslands with the colorful blooms. Now it was just an unending row of massive tree trunks bunched together with their branches interlaced above in a tangled web, allowing only scattered rays of sunlight to penetrate. We fell silent, and the easy conversation and laughter faded uncomfortably, leaving us in an awkward quiet. We spoke in hushed tones when necessary, but maintained a general unease, 
feeling as if the sounds of the twigs we walked upon were far too loud in the silence that surrounded us. The branches above us creaked and groaned as they swayed in the breeze, and I found myself glancing over my shoulder periodically, as if someone were watching us from behind. Of course, all I ever saw was underbrush and trunks, but I couldn't shake the feeling. A couple hours later, we were all staggering along the overgrown trail when Jake called a halt. Let's take a short break and have some water, he said, setting his pack down and lowering himself onto a nearby rock. Thankfully, we all followed suit, massaging our aching feet and guzzling from our water bottles. Any idea how much longer before we reach the camp? Amir asked, wiping at his forehead with his hand. Jake pulled out his trail map and sighed. I don't know, to be honest. I thought we'd have hit it by now. And you're saying you don't know how to get there? snapped Sophia. I thought you said you've taken this way before. Yeah, I did, Jake said. But I think maybe that last fork in the trail disoriented me. Hold on, let me figure out where... Liam strained his eyes, trying to make heads or tails of the map over Jake's shoulder, but it was all Greek to him. Jake waited a long moment or two before he released a heavy breath and folded the map. Sorry, folks. I've lost our way and can't find our campsite from here. Shit, we are way off course, Amir exclaimed with growing panic. We're a little turned around, but it's not a big deal, said Jake. If we just head west a ways, we should run into something we recognize and can figure out where we are. Yeah, that was all well and good, but there were trees as far as I could see in any direction, and I didn't know how Jake expected to track the sun through this dense canopy. Hell, we didn't have a lot of options other than to follow Jake's lead, did we? Our spirits sinking, we continued to follow him as he bravely chose what he believed to be a westerly route. But after another hour of trudging, we hadn't seen any familiar clearings or trails. I don't think we're headed west any longer, Jake. I think we're just moving in circles, said Sophia. Jake was all about that, but when a branch snapped loudly from directly behind us, we all jumped and Sophia stifled a little scream. I spun around, half expecting to see that freaky thing in Mark's picture hiding behind one of the tree trunks, but there was nothing. Just more trees and more encroaching darkness as the sun continued to drop. Jake stopped us and threw his hands up. Okay, okay, I guess we're a little disoriented, he said. The evening was growing late, and the shadows were long within the trees as we continued to walk, still without any sign of the trail. Jake maintained his bravado assuring us that he was perfectly aware of exactly where we were and leading us in another direction, but I could see the tight set of his shoulders and knew he was getting worried. The forest grew darker with the approaching night, and the trees seemed to close in around us, their naked limbs outstretched like grasping fingers. Wisps of fog began to snake along the ground, tickling our ankles and calves as we trudged through the silent forest. I don't think I even heard a single leaf rustle in the eerie stillness or a squirrel chittering as it scampered up a tree trunk. It was almost like the sounds had been muted, stifled, and I found myself getting more than a little uncomfortable with the suffocating quiet. We kept close together, starting at every branch that cracked and every rustle of leaves. A disquieting feeling, like being watched from the darkness, set my nerves on edge, but nothing followed our jittery forms. A movement caught my periphery and... I spun in a quick circle, scanning the tree line, but only the darker shadows of the early evening moved in. Any of you see that? I asked aloud, but it was to nobody. What do you mean? Jake asked. Yeah, I nodded. I thought I saw something moving behind that tree trunk. Maybe it's just a deer or a anything, Liam offered, but he didn't sound very convinced. We quickened our pace anxious to lay eyes on some sort of recognizable landmark before nightfall descended in earnest. We jumped when we heard branches snapping a moment later directly behind us, spinning around in terror, but there was nothing there, just trees for as far as we could see. Man, this is getting really, really weird, Sophia said tremulously, clutching Amir's arm desperately. Jake's earlier brashness was gone. We need to keep moving. We'll find something but we never found the trail. 
Soon, even that dim orange light was only a memory, and we were left stumbling around in the pitch black. Jake pulled a flashlight from his belt and clicked it on, but the weak cone of light struggled to penetrate the heavy shadows. Unfamiliar noises began emanating from the trees on either side of the trail, causing us to subconsciously close ranks. Groaning, chuffing, and growling sounds seemed to echo all around us. At one point, a high-pitched and distant screech rent the air, unlike any animal noise I'd ever heard. The sounds of branches snapping and vegetation thudding to the ground, accompanied by the heavy movement of something gigantic, filled my ears, and I tensed, expecting to see some massive beast leap out of the brush and attack us. We just stood there, frozen in fear. The heavy, ponderous footfalls circled our frozen group, and when they passed into the beam of my light, I could see the color drain from Jake's face. Hey, to whoever you are out there, shouted Liam to the darkness, his voice cracking with fear. Just stay away and leave me alone. My cry was answered with a low growl that almost sounded like it was directly behind me. I whimpered, reaching out and snatching up the hands of Amir and Sophia, certain that I was about to be eviscerated. A minute or two later, the sounds began to lessen, and I felt an overwhelming sense of relief wash over me that nearly dropped my legs out from under me. Jake was swinging the flashlight all over the place, looking for the source of the sounds, but there was nobody else in the unsteady and subdued light. Man, fuck this cursed forest, Amir said. I don't care if we have to crawl on our bellies until the sun comes up. We continued to shuffle forward through the darkness, unsure if we were even still heading in the right direction. I could hear the sounds of cracking and splintering behind us and around us as we went, sometimes distant, sometimes uncomfortably close. The flickering shadows danced in my peripheral vision, coming and going when I snapped my head to look at them. It seemed like the thing was toying with us. We continued forward, stumbling over the knotted roots and garbage that lay hidden in the grasping darkness. Our lights could only illuminate the narrow path ahead of us, and we were effectively blind to anything from the sides or behind us. The blackness of the night seemed almost to press in around us like a physical thing. The shadows grew alive with the sounds of groans and loud snaps as we walked, causing us to jump at each. More than once, the sound of a branch breaking or leaves rustling nearby sent us spinning around on our heels, fearfully flashing the light all around us to try and catch a glimpse of something chasing us within the darkness. But we never saw anything. But still, the slick, sliding sounds followed behind us as we made our way along the path. I could almost see the shifting forms of shadowed shapes moving through the underbrush, hear the heavy, shaggy bodies slipping through the foliage with an unnatural, sinister grace. The branches of the trees sounded with the weight of some enormous predator, and I swear I heard snorting, snarling breaths echoing just beyond where the light fell, surrounding us and goading us forward like some herd of preyed-upon animals. Sophia's teeth were chattering, and her typically animated face was drawn and colorless. Her fingers dug like iron into Amir's arm, knuckles white. We're going to freeze to death out here, she complained. No, we ain't, Jake protested, but his trembling voice belied his words. We all felt it, though. This wasn't normal. This wasn't just another night in the woods. Something evil was out here, fucking with us. I don't know how long we walked in that darkness. Time ceased to have any meaning. Nearly wept with relief when Jake declared that we needed to stop for a bit. I gladly sank to the ground beside an immense oak tree. My feet were on fire in those damned boots. We drank water and chewed trail mix without enjoying it, all the time keeping our eyes and ears open for any sign of movement. The noises had quieted a bit, but it still felt to all of us like we were being watched. My head was leaning against the rough bark of the tree when the light fell upon some odd scratches in the trunk of the oak. Harsh and ragged, the crude letters cut deeply into the wood and formed the words, OUT. I staggered a few steps forward and took a sharp intake of breath. Hey, uh, come look at this, guys. Their lights joined with mine, illuminating the ominous words. Jake reached out with his trembling hand and touched the shredded bark of the tree. Shit, said Sophia. We need to get the hell out of here now. 
Liam played his light over the trees nearby. Wait, there are more. We rose and began to cautiously move through the trees, finding more of the crudely hacked signs with the blistering letters, all freshly wept with sap. Watching you. It's beyond turning back, don't look. Get out or die. Those unsettling phrases, written on so many of the trees, really began to unnerve me. It was obvious that some bad shit was hunting us, looking to lure us into some sort of deadly trap, just like it had with the unlucky owner of that camera. Sophia screamed and collapsed to the ground in inconsolable tears. Jake stood there, frozen and pale. Liam was uncharacteristically at a loss for words as well, and I think his mouth must have opened and shut a few times without anything coming out. Amir surveyed the woods around us with a hard gaze, like he was ready to fist fight them. There has to be a road somewhere. We need to keep looking. He grunted, attempting to help Sophia to her feet. Something cracked loudly directly behind us, and we all yelped in surprise, spinning around to expect some nightmare to come bursting out of the trees at us, but there was only blackness. I felt a new resolve growing. I was done with being scared and feeling like some helpless prey animal being toyed with. We were getting out of this damned forest tonight, no matter what kind of nightmare bullshit got in our way. I grabbed a heavy branch from a young tree and broke all of the smaller twigs from it, setting about constructing a torch. Cass frowned thoughtfully at the pile on the ground. A uh, sandwich? She offered with a sheepish grin. Shoving back, I snapped. Does anyone have a match or a lighter? Jake's face lit with understanding. You got it. He dropped his backpack to the ground and dug a cheap, disposable cigarette lighter from a pocket inside. When he handed it to me, I flicked the little wheel and ignited the end of the makeshift torch, casting an angry orange flame and driving back some of the oppressive shadows. Hey, toss me that lighter, I said to Jake. Help me get some more of these things cranked out. Soon, we all stood with blazing torches, the circle of flickering light casting heat upon our cheeks and fanning the rebellious flame in my mind. We were not powerless. We would face this evil head-on and without fear. I waved the torch in my hand and yelled into the woods, We know you're there, you son of a bitch! Come get some! We all began yelling into the darkness, our voices growing hoarse. Sophia's cries turned to sobs, then to clenched teeth silence. For far too long there was no response, only the silence of the dead. After that, the heavy, deliberate footfalls came from the darkness, moving closer within the torch-lit area. Our breath caught as the massive shape moved into our view from the shadows, the head nearly reaching the treetops in height. The thing was muscled and large, and its ape-like lower body was covered in shaggy fur, but its torso was somehow twisted and its arms hung long enough to nearly reach its taloned feet. Its head was almost lupine in appearance, with a long snout and pointed ears. Yellowed fangs filled its mouth and hung over its lips in an angry rictus, and thick ropes of drool streamed from its open mouth, the shaggy fur of its neck and cheeks matted and bloodied. But the strangest and most unsettling thing about it was its eyes. They were a bright yellow, and the pupils were long, perfectly round ovals with the widest aperture I'd ever seen, like they were desperate to gather every scrap of available light, and hungry, and intelligent, hungry and intelligent, and fixed squarely upon us. This was no mindless beast, this was a calculated predator. Its fur was scratched and battered, with old fight wounds here and there, where the flesh beneath was crooked with healed scar tissue. Dried blood and grime matted in clumps throughout its ratty coat, and the long black claws at the tips of its fingers flexed periodically and clicked against one another menacingly. A fetid smell like spoiled meat and a musky animal smell rolled off of it, accompanied by some other rancid stench I couldn't place. The massive beast moved heavily through the forest, and its yellow eyes seemed to glow with hunger as it approached me. I tightened my grip on the torch in my shaking hands, it was fight or die right now. And then the thing was leaping at me, mouth agape, and I was thrusting the flaming torch into its face, and it was screaming hoarsely and clawing madly. 
With that opening, the rest of us piled in, shouting in anger as we began laying into the creature with our torches. I could smell the foul odor of singed fur and scorched flesh rising in the air. The big son of a bitch was staggered from the incendiary assault. It roared loudly, batting us away with massive claws in that instant like swatting flies. I hit the ground and stars danced in my vision. I needed to push past it, though. My crew was depending on me. I struggled to my feet just as the monster lunged for Liam, jaws wide. With a wild shout, I grabbed a piece of deadfall and threw it with all my might, striking the thing in its head and deflecting its path. Liam ran off, pale-faced but uninjured. We can do this, I shouted after him, my voice grating. Stay with us. The others came running when I cried out, and together we stood around the thing, lashing out with the torch flames to keep it at bay. It looked like it was angry that she dared to challenge it. It growled furiously and sprang directly at Sophia, sinking its claws into her shirt and tearing it as she leapt backward with a shriek. No! Amir shouted, bringing his flashlight down on the monster's appendage and pushing it back. I followed suit, flames searing the hind leg and causing it to collapse with a howl. It was attacking us, but we were beyond being afraid. Jake was punching the sides of the raging monster as Sophia fired round after round of flame into its jaws. We pushed the monster back, step by step, driving it with our gunfire until the burnt hair was peeling from its hide and it screeched in pain, before finally we beat it and it slunk away into the darkness. We were both out of breath and panting when we watched the last embers of the charred body of it into the shadows and felt the tremendous weight lift from my shoulders. We were battered and bruised and demoralized, but we were victorious. Sophia was nearly collapsing against Amir, weeping all through the violent few moments. Liam just stood there in shock, eyes like saucers and mouth hanging open in astonishment of what had happened. Jake squeezed my shoulder, mirroring my exhausted grin. We did it, he rasped. Bushes be damned, we ran through them, heedless of the scratching branches and thorns that tore at our clothing and flesh. The only thing that mattered was getting as far away as possible from that... thing. It wasn't long before we were completely lost, the twisted branches of the treetops obscuring the night sky, but we kept running, driven by pure panic and adrenaline. I don't know how long we ran. I ignored the fiery ache in my chest and the rubbery weakness in my legs. If we slowed down, we were dead. There were no sounds of pursuit, but that didn't mean we were safe. This was the thing's home ground. It could be toying with us anywhere, right behind the nearest gnarled tree trunk, just out of view, waiting for us to grow complacent so it could snatch us up once more. We were all panting raggedly and sweating like pigs when Liam shouted for us to halt. We collapsed to the ground as one, gasping for breath. My entire body felt like a leaf in the wind, and I clawed my fingers into the yielding soil to keep from collapsing unconscious. Nobody said anything. Nobody needed to. We just clung to that frozen ground and to each other, all of us doing our best to remember how to breathe. I felt a deep, numbing cold down in my bones, and Liam's lips were turning an unhealthy shade of blue in the pale moonlight. I had no doubt in my mind that if we stopped moving, we would freeze to death. Jake stumbled to his feet first, unsteadily. We need to keep moving, he slurred, teeth audibly chattering. It was difficult to understand him, his voice was so raw and scratch. He grabbed Sophia's arm and looked around blearily. Come on, it's gotta be this way. The road must be nearby. I wanted to laugh hysterically at his oblivious optimism, but I could feel that lunatic edge encroaching, just out of sight, just out of mind, just out of reach. Instead, I choked back the semi-manic half-laugh, half-sob, took Amir's proffered hand, and followed him, shuffling behind Jake. He led us on, insisting that there had to be a trail nearby, but the forest all looked the same. Tall trees and darkness, nothing else. It was way too much like a threat to believe it wasn't real. I had to be hallucinating, I told myself. My brain was so addled that it was playing tricks on me, wasn't it? Each time Jake offered some encouragement to keep us moving, I felt a little less anxious. 
His unwavering confidence that we would find our way out before long helped to prevent the rising panic from setting in, kept us from giving up. I continued to trudge forward, not feeling the pain anymore. Jake's voice was suddenly there, raspy and distant, telling me we were almost there, almost there. I had nearly disbelieved my own eyes when the foliage began to thin, and when I saw the first bits of it, the grey edges visible between the tree trunks ahead of me, pavement, a road. We stumbled out of the woods with weak legs, and I cried openly with relief. Jake's smile faltered at the sudden loud explosion from the tree line behind us. A blur of motion from behind caused us both to spin just in time to catch sight of the huge form leaping from the brush yellow predatory eyes flashing with a menace that told me it had found us. We tore off again, keeping our eyes locked on the road ahead. We were so close to freedom, just inches away. We could hear the enraged roars of the monster behind us, as well as the thunderous impacts of its footfalls upon the ground as it gained on us. I could smell the fetid breath as its razor-sharp talons raked my shirt. We tumbled out into the empty street, not daring to look back as the trees erupted behind us and I could see them violently shudder as the thing burst through them. Suddenly, the blinding headlights of a powerful engine were upon us and the loud grumble of the big motor approached us from out of the darkness. A park ranger's truck. Hey, over here, we yelled desperately, waving our arms to flag him down. Fortunately, the truck slowed and pulled over and a park ranger peered out his expression alarmed at the sight of us and our disheveled and mud-covered state. Jesus, please help us. You have to help us, Sophia wailed, sobbing. There's some, some thing in the woods. It was right behind us. Her words dissolved into sobbing confusion, but the ranger was already pushing his way through the door on the opposite side. Okay, let's get you folks out of here. We all piled into the taxi, a few of us even having to sit on the floor, since there weren't enough seats. I found myself on the floorboard with my head in Liam's lap as he absentmindedly pet my head. This looked a lot like something you'd expect to see after an event like this, but I wasn't complaining. Jake grabbed the back of the driver's seat as the ranger hit the gas. Hey, thanks a lot, man. We'll explain everything as soon as we can. Just get us the hell out of here, okay? Don't worry, you're safe now said the ranger, but he also kept casting nervous glances back towards the darkened trees as they began to recede. Without warning, the loudest explosion I'd ever heard tore from the tree line and the most guttural roar I'd ever imagined. We all screamed in terror as the enormous form of the beast burst from the darkness and into the red glow of the brake lights on the road. It was racing beside the truck now, quickly gaining with bright, glowing eyes. I could see every nasty feature of its warped face. Come on, Amir shouted. The ranger floored the accelerator and we tore around a corner, the howling roars of the monster dropping away behind us. I sagged against Liam, feeling suddenly exhausted, but grateful. We were out. We were out of the woods and away from that thing. If it hadn't been for this ranger, I don't think we would have seen morning. The truck was hurtling toward the town, and I could see the glow of the streetlights ahead. I hadn't realized that concrete, glass, and electricity could be so beautiful, but I was glad to be back in the familiar surroundings of the sane and safe world. The ranger just kept shaking his head, muttering sweet Jesus under his breath, but didn't say a word as we babbled past him, our words devolving alternately into sobs and maniacal laughter. The fields and the homes blurred past in a peaceful monotony. None of the unsettling stares from the shadows, and I felt comfortable enough to believe that we had reached the outskirts of the town. But when I closed my eyes, two bright orbs still gazed at me from the darkness. But it wasn't over.